Hi guys, I am here with Josh and Trevor at the 3D printed house right off of Oak Alley. And I've had several of you guys ask me about it. And unbelievably, they were here and they said I could come check it out with them. They were just telling me about the process a bit. A um, couple things that, that I noticed right away is if you've seen a lot of social media, it has the sausaging, which I just learned that term. Yep, Thank yep. you. And they were explaining the extrusion process here just a bit. And uh, I asked how it compares in terms of time to uh, to extrude the house, basically, versus a traditional site built with uh, either block or stick construction. And uh, what were you saying, how, how long? Yeah, yeah, so this home right here, it's about 57, 58 hours of print time. Now, it is a 12-inch wall instead of an 8-inch wall. The owner of the property is from Canada. We're getting R47 installation values out of this. So um, the machine can run around the clock uh, here and uh, at least in Brevard County, which is where the property is. I believe it's uh, 7 to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturdays when you can't operate. So you could w knock it out in just about a week. But uh, we've had a lot of media coming on. I know we have Fox 35 coming on at 11. Oh. They're be here not too long. <laughs> We're doing workshops next week. So we've been, uh, you know, doing it bit Stop by bit. Yeah, yeah, we've had when, 25, 30 visitors a day on the site. I bet. Um, when is, uh, if so, you said you're doing a workshop this weekend? Uh, it's so, going to be, I think, Monday, Wednesday, Friday of next week. I get something like that. Is that now? Is that for traditional media or can consumers like if can I can I send a client here to come um, kind of check out the process? Potentially, um, I'm not sure what days. I know some we only allow a certain number of people on site at a time. Sure. So if there's uh, some days that are pretty booked up, I've not been handling scheduling for it. Right. But uh, you could reach out to uh, Josh Cardona. Uh, he's been handling scheduling with it. it should be okay. Josh Cardona at opies corecom Okay. This is, I mean, it's so cool. You were explaining how these, uh, how the machines work. Yeah, there are three machines. We have Frank the printer, Gary the mixer, and Mary the bulk truck. So the bulk truck arrives with dry material. It pneumatically pumps it over to Gary, the mixing machine. Gary mixes it with water from standard garden hose. And uh, he's really the brains of the operation here. He's taking in the water temperature, material temperature, pressures throughout the system, even is telling the printer exactly what to do. Uh, so it's able to mix that print material perfectly exactly when needed. Um, and that's really how we're able to achieve a pretty high quality of wall. I know uh, in the background you probably see a control joint between two different print sections. You can see on the other side of the home what it ends up looking like. We can patch the thing to make it look invisible. Um, instead of using a cement saw to cut in our control joint, like cracks in a sidewalk. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. actually kind of looking for it over there. No, no, I um, assumed that was yeah. an expansion joint, like yeah. in a sidewalk, like you said, or in a, or in a mm -hmm. monolithic slab like this. Now, we're hiding these behind a two by six wall. We have a four bedroom, four bath house. So there's a bathroom here, bathroom here. And we have a two by six wall in here. So you'll never see it anyway. Also, it's going to be the plumbing infrastructure yeah. is going to be right yeah. there. Okay, sure. We, we can definitely plumb inside of uh, 3D printed walls. That's what we normally do. But what we found is that the two most commonly renovated rooms in a home are kitchens and bathrooms. Kitchens and bathrooms, so, that's what sells houses. Yeah, yep. so that's why we're investing about the print material. It's extremely durable. It's not going anywhere. The worst thing about the print material is it's extremely durable. It's not going anywhere. So <laughs> when it comes time to doing those renovations, yeah. uh, it's definitely easier. You're not so, cutting a new window, right? Yeah, that's, exactly. Uh, that's a different so stick we have, we have different, um, some different styles on our rooms. We're going to do a skim coat of stucco on the first one, kind of plaster the walls to give a smooth, even texture. Okay. Um, we're using prefab uh, Delta shower stalls, but we have some different sizing that's going in them. Uh, we've... Uh, had some interesting and unique features, but the walls you see right now are fairly common, where you see a lot of straight lines and angles. We have printed some like hard corners. Um, it's really actually out front is the best example of it. Okay. Where what we can do is uh, we have a, a stone facade going on the front of the home. So that stone facade will only come up to if you're looking at areas like this, the stone facade is only coming up to here. Okay. So we can do a tight 90 degree angle and then round it out. Okay. So if you had cabinets or, uh, you know, uh, any, anything that was going up against the wall that needed a tight 90. Right. It's nice to know no other printer in the world can do something like that, a tight 90 degree angle. 
So, and you were saying when you when you when you're finishing the inside, are you tr using traditional furring strips, or you said, or is we it going to be absolutely could, but we're just going to leave it as is. So by doing that, we're able to eliminate the need for, for drywall at all. Drywall oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So, so when someone goes to hang a TV, they could they could hang God, as... God's own TV yes, exactly. <laughs> with some tapcons uh, yep. and uh, yep. hang a jumbotron. Yeah. Okay. One thing that you haven't seen just yet because we, we're going to be printing it next week is this feature wall. So these are all pretty standard. Uh, I'd say kind of boring walls, but the feature wall, we're really getting to play with something here. So here yeah. we have 3D printed baseboards and columns and uh, recessed fireplace. 3D printed baseboards? Yeah. So oh, it sticks just, out what, yeah, a quarter bump, inch? Yep. So we just yep. bump a layer out and then we leave our first layer kind of inset so you can uh, tuck flooring in underneath it. And then sure. yeah. Yeah, okay. sometimes we'll set down a furring strip on the ground, print over it, remove the furring strip, and now you have a neat place to tuck your flooring under. Flooring, um, tile, vinyl, yeah. Yeah, wood, right. whatever. Yeah, on a, on a curved wall, having a baseboard that's printed in the wall is a lot easier than trying to yeah. nail wood to a curved wall. Sure. But here, yeah, we have columns, we have an arch. It's a concave back behind the TV. Yeah. And that projects sound back directly at the viewers and not to other people in the home. Oh, wow. Um, we're going to be able to see the capabilities of the 3D printer when we do a yeah. serpentine wall and be able to see all the curvature and how easy and how clean it's actually going to look versus trying to do that traditionally. Mm -hmm. So how often do you have to recalibrate? Because it's got to have incredibly tight tolerances if you're oh, talking yeah, about does. a quarter inch off for a baseboard. As you can see, we've got the stabilization and the track system. Yeah, so it drives from position to position, and then we basically tell the printer to level itself. From moving from this section to the next will take about 15 to 30 minutes. The first two minutes of that is un well, unleveling and disconnecting a few of the material hoses. Uh, then you just use kind of joysticks and a controller. We'll jog it or drive it over to the next position. And then there's a little laser on the extruder and we just touch off two points and that lets it know where it's gonna print. It does a little dry run to prove it knows where it's gonna print and yeah. we tell it to go. Yep. That's amazing. But uh, I mean, you were saying a quarter inch. I mean, we're, we're well under millimeter accuracy with some of this stuff. Wow. It's just, you want, it, it all depends on how well you're snapping it and uh, you wanna make sure that you're you're doing everything as good as you can because the robot's going to do exactly what you tell it to do. Yeah. <laughs> so if you screw up, it, exactly. it, it didn't screw up. It did exactly. what you told it to yeah. do. You screwed up. Thankfully, it's it's pretty easy to operate. Um, sure. And it really only takes one person running the machine. We recommend two people out here. One who's just kind of you know monitoring the system, making sure that the pressures are good, and another guy kind of walking around. Maybe um, like today, we're going to be pre-installing our windows uh so the other person will be yeah, like bringing out a wood sure truck. yeah we have those in there um one so we can print on top of it we could remove it later it could just be like a temporary formwork but okay. we're in a high velocity wind zone here we're keeping the wood bucks in place okay. uh, so it'll give us a nice place to nail the window with kind of a nail fin flange on the outside and then also trim onto the wood right um but we could always eliminate that buck or just remove it after printing and then go ahead and do a standard sill but we'll be uh everything has spray foam insulation inside of it and then we pour a sill plate on top of these so we're gonna have a window here and then a window over here. This one is six feet wide by four feet high. So this area right here with no infill will be uh, putting in some rebar and then grouting these plates flat. That way, if you did remove the wood buck in the future too, you have a nice concrete plate that you can then add to or uh, modify as needed. But yeah, the pattern is, is meant to be intentionally identical to a concrete block. So all these webs. So eight, eight, eight inches, inches, eight inches, yeah, okay. Now with, we're at 12 inches. You can find 12 inch concrete blocks at Home Depot. Oh. So normally we do eight inches. The only reason we're at 12 inches, owner of the property is from Canada, we wanted a really high R value. So instead okay. of looking in the R15 to 17 range that we're normally at with the eight inch, we're up at R47 with these. Well, so. that is one thing that's definitely not ever gonna go out of style is uh -huh. uh, energy efficiency. Yeah, I think absolutely. it's only gonna become more and more important. Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, this is fascinating. I'm so glad you guys are willing to have this conversation with me. Absolutely. Thank you very much. No the um, do you, now, I'm a, do you have an on-site generator? Is that how you're powering the whole apparatus? So on the back, you can see there's two batteries. Uh, there's there's two silver boxes in the back of the bulk truck. Those okay. are filled with Tesla batteries. Really? 
So we also, um, you know, we will bring in shore power. Basically, you can use a generator for it. You can power it off a, uh, a normal connection, like a 220 volt uh, sure. connection that you'd use for your dryer, for your uh, your uh, stove. Yeah, so it's yeah. not even like it's not even like a high power need. No, like you don't no. have three phase or anything out no, here. It's no, like no. you. Just, no, yeah, that's incredible because the the size of this equipment looks like it would be a huge draw. Yeah, but uh, you know we wanted to make sure it could operate in a lot of different environments. Um, it's something that is pretty easy to tie into. Uh, same thing with water needs. It's you're using a garden hose, but you could use a, a water buffalo or a mo mobile water storage tank to uh, get water and uh, generator out on site too if you really needed something like that. But um, yeah, this is. Uh, this is where we're at here. So far, everything's been going pretty well. We've been uh, taking it slow and steady to make sure people can come out and, and see the process. Uh, we've been, uh, we've got a lot of scheduled visitors that have been coming out, but we should be finishing up here shortly. And then there's randos like me who are like, I'll stop by and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, this is fascinating. And you guys are gonna fire up the machine here and just, uh, wait, Marie, Maria? Uh, this one is Frank, Frank, Mary, and Mary is the vulture. Oh, Mary. Yes. And who's this one? This is Frank. This is Frank. Frank. Frank gets all the and glory. That's Gary. Frank, Mary. Gary, and Mary. And Mary. Incredible. Here. This yep. is so cool. It's a family affair. All right. Well, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna stop the video here, but I'm going to. Uh,